Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh1, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we talk about Space Marines, specifically the Emperor's Children. If you guys have any requests for Space Marine chapters that you guys would like us to create a video for, please comment down below. Don't forget to put suggestion followed by whatever topic or whatever Space Marine chapter or even topic of Warhammer 40K that you guys would like us to create a video for. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe because we post videos every single day. With that said, let's get into 40 facts about the Emperor's Children. The Emperor's Children are a traitor legion of Chaos Space Marines, who devoted themselves solely to the service of the Chaos God Slanesh, the Prince of Pleasure, though they were originally the Imperium of Man's proud Third Legion of Astartes. Before their corruption at the start of the Horus Heresy, the Space Marines of the Third Legion symbolically colored their power armor with the liqueur of Imperial Purple and Gold to mark their rank and mission as the Emperor's Chosen with the Emperor's own standard, the Palantine Aquila, the golden double-headed eagle worn upon their chest plates. While this is now a common decoration for Astartes in the 41st millennium, during the days of the Great Crusade, only the Emperor's children were allowed to display the Aquila as a sign of their own favor in the eyes of the Emperor of Mankind. The Emperor's Children Legion Badge during the Great Crusade consisted of a golden eagle's wing that ended in a talon. This was part of the symbol of the Aquila, the Emperor's personal heraldry, which the Emperor's children were the only legion authorized to wear at that time. The officers of the Third Legion wore a larger and more elaborate variant of the Taloned Wings Eagle that was crafted out of precious metals, usually a gold wing and talon that clutched a purple jewel. The Emperor's children began to decorate their personal armor with honors that reflected notable skills and deeds. Their armor displayed the typical aesthetics and complex heraldry that was a hallmark of the Third Legion. For example, a helmet crest denoted status within the Legion's organization. White enamel inlay on an individual warrior's armor was used to denote rank and heraldry and was an older Legion tradition dating back to before its unification with the Primarch Fulgrim. Sealed paper carried oaths of moment, commending the wearer to fulfill specific duties or ordinances at any cost. During the latter stage of the Great Crusade, the Emperor's Children war gear included considerable personal adornments and customization of their armor. A primary example of this would be the Eye of Horus, prominently displayed to denote service with the War Master, and possible involvement in the Legion's Warrior Lodge, the Brotherhood of Phoenix. The Third Legion was created alongside its brother Space Marine Legions during the latter phase of the Unification War on Terra with many of its finest warriors drawn from the courts and blood vassal populations of Europa. The nobles of Europa selected the finest of their youth and offered them up to the Emperor of Mankind as a tribute and penance for their previous defiance after their systematic humiliation in battles at the hands of the Imperial Thunder Regiments. Among them were sons drawn from each noble family a fact said by some imperial savants of the time to have given the legion its lasting name, reaffirming in later years by its primarch after his rediscovery by the expeditionary fleet of the Great Crusade. Of these types, some European noble families gave in grudging tribute and thought of these young men as little more than hostages, while others cooperated with the zeal of true converts to the imperial cause. House Loculus of Comarg is said, for example, to have sent all of its sons to be transformed into Astartes at the time of their capitulation to imperial rule, and to have given their first sons of each generation thereafter to the Third Legion willingly. In later decades, other Terran dynasties followed the example of Europa, filling the ranks of the Third Legion with the flower of Terran youth, who seemed well matched with the aristocratic blood of its initiates, forming a martial brotherhood whose ancestry and war stretch back to the lost age of human history. In these early wars, the Third Legion was used to support some of the more notable actions of the new Imperial Army, and in many instances to directly lead its troops into battle. This differed notably from many of the other first founding Space Marine Legions, who were often deployed as unified commands en masse to serve as shock troops supported by heavy war machinery. 
Coordinating and leading such lesser troops seemed a natural fit for the former aristocrats of the Third Legion. They had a profound ability to understand the strengths and manifold weaknesses of the diverse armies in service to the emperor, and drew on the long traditions of Terra's military aristocracy to command with purpose. The Antarctic Clearance Campaign during the Unification Wars is for example marked as a victory for Army Group Antilles, but in truth, any detailed analysis of the ancient conflict reveals that it was the Third Legion which sculpted the tactics and strategies of the campaign and led it to be a successful completion. Likewise, when the Bronze Host took Nadirn, it was under the eyes and with the aid of the Third Legion, and the fifth raising of Jovesat II was done practically by their hands. Though other names than theirs throng the honor rolls of the unification, the examples are numerous and through them all the Third Legion proved their superb ability to execute and exceed the intent and expectation of their emperor in war. It was after the Proximan betrayal early in the Great Crusade that the Third Legion was granted the exclusive right to bear the Palatine Aquila and the Emperor's personal standard in its own heraldry. This honor was bought in blood as the Third Legion's 16th cohort assigned to the Imperial Compliance Ceremonies and the Emperor's Honor Guard for Proxima's formal ascension into the Imperium, fought and died to the last warrior alongside the Lego Custodis, never giving ground during the insurrection. By their sacrifice was the wounded Emperor who had suffered injury through the use of Vortex weapons by the enemy, bought time to recover and fight his way clear of the Proximon insurrectionist trap. While the Great Aquila in its variations signifies both the Imperium of Humanity and the loyalty to the Emperor as its master, and there is much agony bound up into its form. For the Third Legion, it also now represents their own deeds as well, an honor never given to another Space Marine Legion before the Great Betrayal. In situation of hazard and utmost danger, the Emperor often uses members of the newly redubbed Emperor's Children Legion as a qualifiers and equerries due to their singular character and mean, a responsibility the Legion was proud to carry. Bearing the Palatine Eagle standard of the Emperor, members of the Third Legion accompanied the Imperial diplomatic missions and emissaries as bodyguards and agents into the heart of the foe, and in battle bore the standard and commanded the armies of the newly conquered and instruments of the Emperor's will and judgment if needed. The sight of the Emperor's symbol carried by one of his favorite warriors was enough to keep many a wavering new ally or recently conquered human worlds in line. These standard bearers and the honor guard that accompanied them symbolically colored their armor with the liqueur of Imperial Purple to mark their rank and mission. So arrayed, none could doubt that the Astartes were the chosen of the Emperor, and such was the record and esteem with which they functioned, that for a time it became common for them to bear the Emperor's wishes, and the order of the legions and Imperial military forces scattered across the newborn Imperium. The nature of the Third Legion psychology meant that they would carry the precious meaning and intent of any order without deviation, and with their last breath if needed. In this role the Third Legion took on the mantle of the Emperor's will, and no other legion was so honored. A notable campaign that showed off this prowess in battle is in the Praxil system, which was settled by humanity in the distant past, and had remained isolated for millennia. Even without warp capable starships, the people of Praxil had still managed to flourish instead of regressing to barbarism. Though bringing Pax Hill into Imperial compliance would bring the Imperium great renown, this formidable civilization refused to bend the knee to the light of the Imperial truth, and instead were prepared to fight and maintain their independence. Their war fleet was formidable, and managed to push back the initial invasion of the Imperial Expeditionary Fleet. But if the Praxil warships proved formidable, their warriors proved to be downright deadly. Drawn from the system's prison colonies, each was already a formidable killer and survivor, implanted with drug glands, vat-grown muscles, and bone grafts, mind-wiped and conditioned with battle memes. They were lethal and dangerous, even to the Astartes. 
armored and partially powered battle plates bearing high penetration laser weaponry and fracturally sharpened blades. They posed a grave risk to the Imperial forces. The Imperium wanted Praxil's wealth and resources to harness to the needs of the Great Crusade, and so securing Praxil fell to the army group sized force of the Emperor's children, supported by selected elements of the Imperial Army and forces of the Mechanicum. Despite meticulous planning, the campaign did not begin well as substantial losses were inflicted upon the Imperial forces. Changing their strategy, the Emperor's children decided that instead of focusing on the systematic conquest of the system's void stations, moons, and planets, they would instead focus upon Praxel's fleets. Without the ability to redeploy their strength, each of the Praxel domains would become a closed tactical problem, but the Praxel had anticipated such tactics and instead deployed multiple strike fleets to attack the Imperial fleet. Substantial losses were incurred during the initial engagements as the Praxel took advantage and attacked the Imperial toehold on their outer moons and stations. A representative of the War Council of Terra observed that the Emperor's Children Lord Commander, Idenum, who was charged with the command of the Praxel compliance, would never willingly admit that he needed assistance and therefore issued a request to Terra for reinforcement. Soon, elements from the Blood Angels Legion, under the command of Chapter Master Raldaron and Marshal Kazimus of the Imperial Fist, arrived in system to augment the beleaguered Imperial forces. Despite his misgivings and slights to their personal honor, the Lord Commander accepted his cousin's legion's assistance and immediately drew up plans for prosecuting the second offensive against Praxel. Utilizing the strength of the Blood Angels and the Imperial Fist Legion, the Emperor's children launched a successful second offensive against Praxel that soon saw an Imperial victory. When the Imperium claimed its victory, however, Lord Commander Idenum refused to acknowledge his role in effecting the compliance of Praxel and would later have a hand as a prime conspirator of his Legion's treachery during the Isvan III atrocities. The defense of tranquility was a protracted and vicious engagement fought by the Emperor's children on the periphery of the Dalatine Nebula during the early phase of the Great Crusade. This volatile region of space would have been bypassed by the Crusade's forces altogether, leaving its vermin inhabitants to kill themselves in their bloody intercene conflicts but there was something present in the region that drew the conquering armies like insects to light, the Dalatine Gates. The Dalatine Gates were part of a mysterious series of warp gates scattered across the stars that had been crafted by ancient and forgotten intelligent species of the Milky Way galaxy, which allowed starships to cross the vast distances of space more safely than even the finest navigators could achieve. This particular warp gate, however, was believed to be the nexus point that could allow access to other warp gates across the galaxy, greatly increasing the ability of the Imperium's fleet to reach new targets and expand the reach of the Emperor's forces. Under the overall command of Horus of the Luna Wolves Legion, several Imperial expeditionary fleets were combined to prosecute a campaign to purge the Dalatine Nebula. Amongst these Imperial forces were the Emperor's children, although at this time, their fighting strength was still very limited, comprising of a single cohort of barely 500 warriors. Nevertheless, the Emperor's children were given the important role of securing the world of tranquility on the trailing edge of the Imperial advance. The world was utterly worthless except that a warp gate designated the Tranquility Gate hung in high orbit above the planet's pole and on a forward imperial navigation and signal relay had been constructed there. The Emperor's children would stand vigil in case the gate was to be used to threaten the imperial advance. Without warning, a fleet of Zeno's warships emerged from the gate, outmatching the imperial vessels in orbit. The Zeno's fleet soon mounted a ground assault against Tranquility's surface. Outmatched by the number of Zeno's committed to the assault, the Emperor's children were forced to make a tactical withdrawal into the surrounding maze of Tranquility's fissures and stacks. Although in retreat, the Emperor's children were far from being beaten. As the Zenos advanced, the Emperor's children pulled them onward, 
striking back and then punishing the foe at every turn. As the Xeno's losses mounted with gathering speed, they frantically attempted to sweep the surface with fire from their orbiting warships in an attempt to gain the advantage. In response, the Imperial warships executed a rapid and desperate counterattack, a murderous pre-planned engagement at point-blank range as the Xenos directed their weapons downward, rendering themselves vulnerable. Seven of the nine alien warships were destroyed in a matter of minutes. Unable to sustain their crushing losses, the remaining Xenos craft fled back through the warp gate, leaving their surviving fighters on the planet's surface dooming them to annihilation at the hands of the Emperor's Children. And those were 40 facts about the Emperor's Children. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to the channel because there's going to be a part 2. Uh, in that part 2, we're going to talk about Fulgrim uniting with his legion, and then the Horus Heresy, and then uh, the present day Warhammer 40k, and where the Emperor's Children are at right now. Uh, if you're already a subscriber, don't forget to hit the little notification button right next to the subscribe button. Uh, if you do that, the Emperor will bless you with so many wins in Warhammer 40k from now until eternity. God bless the Emperor. Or he is a he is a god. Anyways, my question for you guys today is: Do you think that a traitor legion can be um, forgiven? Can they come back to the emperor's light? And if they can, what will they have to do? Uh, comment down below. Can't wait to talk to you guys, and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out.